Good day students, welcome to mathgotserve.com. In this clip we're going to be going over problems 1 to 5 of the June 2015 Algebra 2 Trigonometry Regents exam. Alright, let's take a look at problem 1. It reads, which list of ordered pairs does not represent a 1 to 1 function? So, based on the way this question is structured, um, everything here, um, all these ordered pairs are all functions. How do we know? Um, there are no repetitions on the x's for functions, okay? So, let's write that down. Function basically means um, no uh, repetition for the x's. All right, since everything here is, they're all functions, we should expect no repetitions on the x. But we're asked for which of these is not a one-to-one -one function. One-to-one -one is a special kind of function where every input is assigned to exactly one unique output. Okay, so for one-to-one -one function, guess what you look at? For one-to-one uh, -one function, in that case, you have no repetitions, no repetitions uh, for the y's, okay? There's no need to look at the x's here because they're already all functions. We're just going to focus on the y's and see which ordered pair has repetition, uh, which um, collection of ordered pairs has repetition on the y's, okay? So for option 1, negative 1 is unique, 0 is unique, 1 is unique, 2 is unique, this is 1 to 1. For number 2, 2 is unique, 3 is unique, 4 is unique, 6 is unique. This is also 1 to 1. Option 3, uh oh, 3 repeats. So you have a repetition on this right here. So this is um, your answer. Okay, so let's write it down real quick. Option 3 is not 1 to 1. because 3 repeats because um, y coordinate, remember it has to do with the y coordinate, y coordinate um, 3 is repeated, okay? So that makes it, is not a one-to-one -one function. All right, for option number, question 2, it says the terminal side of an angle measuring 4 pi over 5 radians lie in quadrant so what quadrant does this lie in? The difficulty that some students might have with this problem is that this angle is expressed in radian form. So which um, angular measure is, is it easy for you to determine the quadrant of an angle? It's degrees, right? So if we can convert this radian measure, 4 pi over 5 radians, into degrees, then it's easy to determine what quadrant uh, this angular value lies in, okay? So to do that, we have two options, either pi over 180, pi radians over 180 degrees, or 180 degrees over pi radians. So which one are we going to use here? Since we want the radians to cancel out, we're going to use the one with the radians in the denominator, so we use this option here. Okay, so we have 180 degrees, over pi radians, this just helps us convert this to degrees so we can determine what quadrant it lies in. The radians cancel out, which is expected. Pi's cancel out, so we're left with a degree measure, which is good. 4 goes here 1, 4 goes into um, 18 three times, remember, remainder 2, and then <clears throat> remainder 3, and then 5 goes into 35 times, no sorry, um, 5 goes into 36 times, so it's 36. Okay, so we have um, 36 degrees after dividing 180 by 5, so now we just multiply 4 times 36, uh, we have 24 plus 120, which is 144 degrees. Now, do you know where what quadrant this angular value lies in? All we just simply do is draw our four coordinates, I mean our four quadrants, by drawing our coordinates first, our axis. 
this is quadrant one, two, three, four. So a full circle is 360, so every quadrant is 90 degrees, okay? So from zero to this positive y-axis is 90, add another 90, 180, 270, and then 360. Now where is 140? 144 is between 90 and 180. So 144 is in uh, quadrant number two, okay? So let's write it down 144. This is 144 degrees. Our answer is option two. All right, let's take a look at problem three. It says if f of x is equal to 2x squared plus one and g of x is equal to 3x minus two, what is the value of g I mean of f of g of negative 2. So this is a problem where you're evaluating a composite function at a specific value. There are two ways of doing this. You can plug in this inner function into the outer function and then substitute, evaluate your answer at negative 2, or you can plug in negative 2 into the inner function and then plug in the result into the outermost function. That is what we're going to do here, okay? So let's start with uh, g of x. g of x is 3x minus 2. We're going to work our way out, okay? So we have f of g of negative 2, okay? So we're going to find the innermost first and then plug our answer into f to find... So let me show you what's going to happen. We're going to take two, negative 2 and plug it into g. And then we'll take our answer of g of negative 2 and plug it into, take this whole thing and plug it into, guess what? F. Okay? All right, so let's do uh, the first step, which is g of negative 2. g of negative 2 is 3 times negative 2. Oops, the wrong color. 3 times negative 2 minus 2. Using the order of operations, we have negative 6 minus 2 which is negative eight, okay? Now we know the inner part of this function. Now, lastly, we're just going to look for g, I mean, f of g of negative two, okay? So to do that, um, we already know what g of negative two is, so we'll just plug that into f, um, f of g of negative two. We know that f is, let's write that on the side here, so f of x, is 2x squared plus 1. So we're plugging this negative 8 into this right here. So we have 2 times, instead of x squared, we're going to have negative 8. Negative 8 squared plus 1. Okay? Let's simplify that. Using the order of operations, we'll have negative 2 squared is 6. Negative 8 squared is 64. So 2 times 64 plus 1. 64 times 2 is 128. 128 plus 1 is 129. Our answer is option number 4. All right, let's take a look at problem 4. It says the expression, the cube root of 27a to the third times the fourth root of 16b to the eighth is what? So we have the cube root of 27a to the third times the fourth root of 16b to the eighth. Now, in order to be able to escape from this radicand, the power of the radicand must match the um, root that you're taking, okay? So here is three. If I can express these two terms as the power of three, we can then divide out and then um, the radicand goes away, okay? To make it more obvious, we can write this as 27, a to the third raised to the what? Raised to the one third power times 16b to the eighth raised to the what? Raised to the one fourth power, okay? Now, can I express 27 as a power of three? Yeah, we know that 27, can be written as 3 to the third power, okay? So we have 3 to the third times a to the third, everything raised to the one third power, times, now can I express 16 as a power of 4? 
recall 16 is um, 2 to the fourth power because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. Okay? So we want the power to match the denominator of the base of the fractional exponent. Okay? And then b to the eighth raised to the one fourth. Okay? So now we just take distribute this one third to all of them. And then we're going to have 3 to the 3 over 3 times a to the 3 over 3 times 2 to the 4 over 4 times b to the 8 over 4. Okay? And then if we just simplify, we're going to have this is 3 to the first power times a to the first power times 2 to the first power times b to the second power. Okay? So we have 3 times 2, which is 6ab square. Okay, so 6ab square is our answer, option number 1. All right, let's take a look at problem 5. It says, if x squared equals 12x minus 7 is solved by completing the square, one of the steps in the process is, so we have x squared equals 12x minus 7. So if you want to complete the square, we want to create um, an incomplete square on the left side, okay? So an incomplete square is of the form ax squared plus or minus bx, okay? And then we'll complete the square um, later on. So what we're going to do is subtract 12x from both sides. So we have an incomplete square, okay? So we have x squared minus 12x equals negative 7. Now to complete the square, we're going to add a term to the left side that makes it a perfect square trinomial, okay? And then in order to preserve equality, we'll add the same term to the right side, okay? Now how do you find that term? Well, you simply find b over 2 squared. That's how you complete the square. In this problem, b is the coefficient of x, which is negative 12. So what do we do with that? We divide it by 2, negative 6, and then we square that. Negative 6 squared is 36, okay? So that's what we're going to add to both sides to complete the square. So we add 36, add 36. Now on the left side, to factor this perfect square trinomial, we root the first and the last and bring down the middle sign, okay? So it's going to yield x minus square root of 36 is 6, quantity square, and then negative 7 plus 36 is 29, positive 29. All right, so our answer for number 5 is option number 3, okay? Thanks so much for taking the time to watch this presentation. Feel free to subscribe to our channel so you can get updates to the remainder of this um, review series. And do give us a thumbs up if you found this presentation beneficial to you. We'll appreciate it. More clips can be found on mathcutserve.com on the test prep. Thanks again for watching. And do not forget to comment. Have a good day. Bye-bye.